Hello and welcome back to this, the third of my Welcome to Querious series. In the previous videos we discussed a few ways that you could make ISK in space and we gave you an introduction to the region of Querious as a whole. In this video we'll be looking more specifically at how you find good systems to do whatever activity it is that you have selected. For many of the activities that we have already discussed, they can be done anywhere or everywhere. If you're going exploring, then you'll need to go and explore and you'll need to try lots of different systems. If you're doing a trade run, moving some materials, then your options there will be limited. Although it's still, it would be worth reviewing some of the tricks that we're going to discuss here about finding dangerous places to travel. This video is more really for the miners and the ratters and the salvagers people who are looking to find a nice safe place to sit down and make themselves some esk. So when you look at the big map of Quirius and you're looking at the list of possible systems that you could choose, the first question is what makes a good system? Now one of the most important things is a low hostile presence. So that means ideally no cloaky campers, Sometimes people take the decision to do things even with a cloaky camper presence, but doing so is a substantial increase to the risk. So uh, unless you're flying something that you really don't care how often you lose it, I do recommend trying to find somewhere which does not have a cloaky camper. Although we will discuss some tricks about how to identify when campers are and aren't active. So avoid the areas camped by enemies. Something that's worth knowing about is if you see a metal liminal storm, some of those storms can actually prevent cloaks from functioning. So any area covered by one of those storms is safe from cloaky campers, although it may still have other forms of hostile presence. In general, you'll want to avoid pipe systems. If you're in a dead end system, then you know that anyone who comes in is probably looking for trouble. Whereas with a pipe system, you will see people traveling through all the time. And even if they're not actively looking for you, they may spot you on a scanner and have a go anyway. So you'll both find yourself interrupted more often and you will be at a higher risk of someone noticing you. So dead end systems and pockets are safer. You'll need your infrastructure hub upgrades or some other valuable resource. So this comes back to the list we were looking at in the previous video, where you could see which upgrades had been installed. Um, you might also, if you're a miner, you might be looking to see whether there's ice belts in a system or other asteroid belts. For, uh, for salvaging, you'll want other people to be ratting or you'll be wanting your own alts to be ratting, so that you can go in and use those. And for mining, one of the big ones is moon mining and looking at when there's a pull on the moon about to complete and then there will be a lot of resources in there for you to grab. So for ratting, you care about the pirate detection array, for mining or prospecting array and the actual moon mining structure. If you want to see what the upgrades do, there is an article which I've provided a link to here and will be in the notes below the video. This article may not be completely up to date now, but it should still give you a bit of an idea of what sort of things to expect for various levels of upgrade and security levels of systems. There is a timer board for Brave that is going to show you when you can expect all of the moons to pop. So if you keep an eye on that and look out for those, and that'll be a great opportunity for you if you're a miner. And then the list that we discussed in the previous video showing which upgrades have been installed in what systems. So to recap, you're looking for a system which has a low number of hostile players, both camping in it and passing through it, and then that are offering some sort of resource which you're then going to try and make use of. So we know what makes a good system. What makes a bad system? <laughs> hostile presence. We already discussed it. But it's a big deal. If you're going to go and try and set up in the system next to Aoife, for example, then you can expect to lose a lot of ships to Imbo. However, if you were a few jumps further away, or if you were in a dead-end system, then maybe you'd be that little bit safer. Of course, 
there's always the risk of roaming gangs. You may see wormholers popping up out of nowhere, even if you've got eyes next door. So there are always threats potentially going to come in. That's one of the things that makes Eve both interesting and quite a harsh universe. Uh, but this will try and help you be a little bit more prepared and reduce your risks. So one of the first tools that is useful to look at is Dotlan. In particular, if you switch to the Kills24 view. So you can see here, we have the region is selected as Quirious, and we have the ship and pod kills in 24 hours. You can also look in the last hour or such like, but 24 hours is a good way to get a rough idea. So if we're looking at Quirious at the moment, at the time I'm recording this video, you can see it's actually been quite quiet. So there hasn't been a lot of activity, but you'll also see that the places where there have been activity, you know, a couple of people have died down here, so that was probably someone hunting ratters. There's been a lot of kills in P2XZ, and this is why we keep saying it's not safe to rat in P2XZ, but people still do it because it's convenient. Um, then you've got the northern pipe coming up here, so again, there's been a lot of kills in that area, which is probably gangs clashing and fighting. So immediately this is saying, well, I don't want to be in any of these three systems, but everywhere else looks reasonably safe. So if you look at this on a, you know, every few days, have a quick of a look, see if anything's changed, see what's going on. And over time, you'll start to draw up a picture of the areas which are safer and the areas which are less safe. So once you've looked at how many people have died, the next thing you can look at is how many people have jumped. So when we say jumps, we're referring to gate jumps. So this is people traveling through the system. And here you can see what are the routes which people are frequently using. So it's quite clear immediately just by looking at where the colors are that you have a lot of activity coming through 3TechF from EFA. You've then got people traveling up through the pipe You've got this central pipe here, again, is seeing a lot of use. p -tac z always busy. This other pipe, fairly busy. So any of these systems which have a lot of travel, if you're active in those systems, then you will see a, you know, you'll see gangs coming through, you'll see people coming through a lot. So you should be watching anyway, even if you're not in one of these systems, but what will happen if you're in these systems is that you will see interruptions a lot more. You may have to recall your drones more often, align out more often, and generally be ready to respond to hostiles passing through. Having said that, because they're more travelled, sometimes there is also more resource in these systems. So for example, I actually ratted in ZTAC UZZN, for several weeks and that was actually one of the main places where i was uh, using and there was a there was a fair amount of traffic coming through but it wasn't enough that it stopped me from being able to rat fairly comfortably and the heavier traffic meant that there were fewer other ratters which meant that things like the bounty risk modifier and so on which we will talk about a little bit later were higher As I mentioned earlier, the kill board is a valuable tool, not just a way to make yourself feel big and clever. So if you see someone who's camping your system, so I picked an example here who was camping a while ago, then you can search for them on Z kill board and you can see the details of what they're doing. So you can get an idea of what sort of ships they fly by coming down and looking and you can see they've this particular person tends to be flying a Loki or a Proteus, so Tech 3 cruisers. You can click through onto that and you can get an idea of what sort of fit. So clearly there's no guarantee that if you see this person in space, they're going to be flying exactly that ship with exactly that fit, but it still gives you an idea of what you can expect, particularly if this kill was very recent, then it's likely they could well be still in the same thing. And then the other very important thing is the heat map so you can look at the activity map for the last 90 days and you can see 
what sort of time zone they're active in and what sort of days they're active. So in this particular case, this is most likely a late European, early US time zone person. Uh, they're busy a lot of the time. They're very active, and they're ac uh, but the, you can see that they are clearly most active around this sort of early evening time. So if you were to log in and see them in system, and it's six or seven in the morning, you may decide it's worth the risk. But if you come in and it's six or seven in the evening, you might say, actually, they are almost certainly going to be active. Uh, for people who are less active than this, th this can e be much clearer. So you'll frequently see for a camper that there's maybe a window of four, five or six hours in the evening for them when they're active and the rest of the day they're barely active at all. Uh, so again, you can judge the threat level. This is Eve, nothing's ever guaranteed, but it does give you some idea and some way of making an informed decision rather than just giving up all hope immediately. So the next thing that makes a bad system is poor infrastructure or resources. At its most simple level, this is just that there is nothing to mine, there's no iHub upgrades, it's a poor security status, there's nothing in the belts. So those, th those are problems that you hopefully are not going to be running into because you've been given all of the tools to find systems where that is not the case. Uh, the last thing, though, which is more dynamic is something called the bounty risk modifier and if the system is too heavily ratted. So if you look at the number of NPC kills that have happened in systems, this should give you some idea of just how active ratters have been there. So you can see, based on what we've uh, already discussed, what you'd expect is things like pockets and branch systems will be busier. Systems near P -tax E are often busier, so you can see here P -tax E, for example, is very, is very heavily ratted despite the risk just because it's so convenient. But when you come down, you'll see this pocket here is quite heavily ratted, this pocket here, this pocket here. So there are good things about that. It means it's probably reasonably safe. Uh, anyone who's coming hunting ratters will know to come and look there. But clearly people are feeling safe enough to be active and to have killed 5,000 NPCs in IGE in the last 24 hours, for example, or 12,000 if you're in W6V. So if people are active in those systems, that's a good sign that they are fairly safe and they are a good place to go if you're risk averse. However, there is a dynamic modifier called the bounty risk modifier. So whenever someone rats in a system, then the bounty risk modifier will go down. Whenever someone is blown up in a system, it will go up. So you can see I'm here at our coalition staging in T5Z in my eagle rocking its brave colour skin. And you can see that here the bounty risk modifier is 200%. So that means that if someone were to come and blow up a let's say a battleship rat in here that is usually 1 million isk, they would actually get paid out 2 million isk. So for every minute you spend ratting, you will get twice as much isk. On the other hand, in the very heavily ratted systems where very few people have died, you will see the bounty risk modifier will have gone completely the other way. Now these thresholds and limits do change from time to time. So the maximum was recently increased to 200%. I'm not actually sure what the current lowest possible is, but you could be looking at 50 or 60%. So you actually have potentially from one of the lowest BRM systems to one of the highest BRM systems, you could be making four times as much ISK. But in order to get that, you have some reason why lots of other people haven't been ratting there. So either it's higher risk, as in this example where I'm in the coalition staging, so there is a constant hostile presence. Or it may be that the, the resources are poor or there is a lack of infrastructure. So, for example, in systems with no station, you will often find that the bounty risk modifier is better because fewer people will be in there and ratting. That does mean that if you're confident to go in there and rat, for example, by fitting a cloak on your ship and using a safe spot, then you may well get a better return. Uh, this does not affect 
the salvaging return. So if you're in an area where the bounties are really low, then that would be a good reason to make sure that you're setting yourself up a salvaging ship. And after you've cleared the site, then using either the same character by switching ships or an alt, then get in there and get all of that salvage, loot all those wrecks, turn them all into components for making rigs, and then go and sell that to either one of the various buyback services, or if you wish to spend the time yourself, you can pick through it and pick out the high value items and sell them yourself. And there we have it. That's the end of part three of this video. So thank you for your time. I hope you found it interesting and informative and that it will help you find the place that you need to. In part four, we shall be looking at traveling, how to identify safer routes and how to try and get safely to your destination. So hopefully I'll see you there for that. Good luck out there and fly safe.